to see all the people that I was created to make a difference for. And it started with me, exploded out of that. (laughs) Has your life, your dreams been interrupted? Good news, it is possible to reinvent our lives. People are doing it every day, and some are brave enough to share the struggles, disappointments, and challenges. If you are looking for a new beginning, a do-over, or to rediscover your passion, maybe even find a new one, then grab a cup of coffee and let's talk. Interrupted, Act 2, Reinventing Your Legacy, with your host, Coach Lori. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to hear about your life now, how you've reinvented and what's going on for you. I love that word, reinvented. Truly, that is a great descriptor for what's happened. I am 53. I just quit my 20-year, six-digit job in started my own business in January. (laughs) I get a little giggly about it because it's like childlike feelings kind of come up when I think about doing that. It's joy and it's been peace in not necessarily a way of not being busy, but just inner peace of just truly finally doing what I feel like I've always been called to do. And it's funny to say that too, because it's not much different than what I've done my whole career. I graduated with a degree in advertising and marketing, and I worked in advertising for seven years, television mostly, then went into marketing for an international aerospace company. I've been one of those rare people who have actually done what I went to college to do my whole 30 plus year career, which is unheard of. Sometimes we do these things, we make these big changes, but then when we hear ourselves say it, is that what happened for you? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, totally. Completely. It was just one of those surrender moments. I am collaborating with small business owners or entrepreneurs to make a difference for them in their business. Every single small business owner or entrepreneur has a different need. We've all got different skills. One of the things that I learned growing up in retail is you always want to surround yourself with people who have strengths where everyone who's an entrepreneur starts their business from their passion. What we end up discovering in working our business is that there's so many things that take over that we have to focus on that we actually don't end up doing what we were so passionate about doing and why we started our business. That's where I step in. We usually talk about what's working, what's not working, what's taking their time, what's drawing them away from their passion. I help them refuel their passion by taking the things off of their plate that are dragging them down. As we all know, consistency is key. And if we can be consistent in all of the daily things that we're doing, then we get the time to really be able to look at and be present with, re-engage with our vision and our passion for what we want to do. My business is called Freedom Collaboration. And that came because I am a true believer that through collaboration, we all gain freedom. When we try and do everything ourselves is when we're so bogged down. The tagline for my business is igniting freedom in your business, finances, and life. What I learned actually through management throughout my career, the best way to become successful is to lift others up. And in lifting others up, we help ourselves to bring other people in who have strengths where we have weaknesses. What I'm hearing is servant leader. It sounds like you are all about serving people to help them succeed, which is beautiful. One of my passions and actually one of my pride, things I'm super pride proud of, is my ability to lift people up. That comes truly from a God gift because I've always been a very independent Almost, I was accused myself when I was younger of being selfish. And it's so funny because everyone who's worked for me saying, you are like one of the least selfish people I've ever known. In retail, I brought up more managers in our companies than any other manager. And in my last 20 years in marketing and education for title and escrow, one of the things I'm really proud of is hiring people, young people and training them up. I'm so 
good at it, it hurts me sometimes because <laughs> they get promoted or they get pulled away from me or they hit, oh, I want to go do this somewhere else. Even though that's hard, I'm so excited for them. I'm always so excited for them. One of my dreams for my business is just that. I will be creating a collaboration app. Basically, I have people that I pull in who have these skills, but may not have the means or the confidence or the abilities to generate their own business, to be able to, their own clients, to be able to utilize these skills. Because I've worked in the creative industries for so long, this is what I see. I see these absolutely phenomenally talented creatives who don't have the business skills to be able to create a business out of their gifts. And that's where the collaboration really comes in in my business is being able to generate projects for these beautiful gifted designers in whatever way they are and be able to help them create a life and a business out of what they love doing. That's why I get so giddy when I talk about this. Like I love doing this and I'm finally at a point in my life where I can do it in the way that lifts me up as well as allows me to lift others up. So what brought you to this? I actually had started my own marketing business back in 2006. The whole reason that I ended up in title and escrow is because I had a passion to start my own marketing business. And my husband at the time was in lending. And he said, you know, real estate agents and lenders need people to help them with their marketing. Why don't you focus on them? He's like, well, go be a title rep because title reps deal with real estate agents and lenders, builders, investors, all different types of business in that industry. And it would be a great way for you to learn about it while making money. And my whole intention in starting in the title and escrow industry was to create my business. However, I stepped into it in 2003 during the height of the pre-bubble, right? First, you know, you make really good money (laughs) in that industry. It was hard to walk away from. And then I ended up getting pregnant in 2005 and it was a high-risk pregnancy. I decided now's a really good time to go ahead and do this. I need to cut back on how much I'm working. I stepped out and I started my business. And of course, 90% of my clients were real estate agents or lenders. So when the bubble burst in 2008, 2009, so did my business. (laughs) I ended up coming back to title and escrow into marketing. And at that point was also going through a divorce. I got stuck in the comfort of the consistent paycheck. I got stuck in the excuses of I'm a single mom. I can't do this as a single mom. I got stuck in the fear of, oh my gosh, what if I start my business and something else happens in the economy or the industry? Or what if I start my business and that happens again? I really got stuck in the muck and the mire of all of the things that we get afraid of and get entangled with to the point where I was miserable. I was miserable in my job. I was miserable at home. I was miserable in my life. And of course, that spills out. I got to a point in 2018 where I was sick and tired of being the victim. I was sick and tired of being miserable. I was sick and tired of being on this hamster wheel to the point where, okay, I got to do something different. Basically, this is not the way I want to die. I don't want to die feeling like this. I started taking some self-improvement courses. I enrolled in a healing school and really started working on me because I spent 10 years blaming everybody else, blaming the industry, blaming the economy, blaming everybody else for my situation and where I was. And it finally hit me that none of that's going to be able to help me. The only thing that's going to be able to help me is me. I stepped into this and got quite a few uh ahas that I wasn't expecting. (laughs) It's horribly difficult. I'm using that word purposefully. Stepping into it is hard. We can all do our things, especially when we're doing them for the right reason. The right reason in that moment for me was changing my family tree, changing my children's future. And I knew it started with me. And when we can heal ourselves, we actually heal both ways. We heal forwards and backwards. It was really, truly about 
changing my children's futures. I had no idea what that would actually look like. Our dreams are just not big enough, and we don't realize how big they truly can be until we start stepping into them. Once God gets a hold of them <laughs> and blows them up for us, it's like, what? Oh my gosh, I had no idea that was even possible. <laughs> That's really where it came down to for me in that moment. One of my favorite quotes is a gal named Alex L. Self-healing is an act of community service. That is so true because I was in a job that I was miserable in. And it wasn't the people. The people around me were beautiful. The job itself was actually very fulfilling had I allowed myself to be fulfilled by it. But I was so miserable that it was seeping out of me. And as soon as I started my healing journey, it was incredible, the communication, how it changed. People that were drawn to me, my ability to actually be able to be present with myself and see what was coming up in me to, over the years, be able to catch it. Is this what represents me and who I am? Yes or no? And there were also some times where things came up that had helped me survive all of the years of my life. And I was able to look at them and say, is this still in my best interest? Do I still need this? At first, I was like, no, I don't need it. Throw it away. And then I'm like, wait a minute. (laughs) Maybe it doesn't need to be thrown away. Maybe it just isn't for me right now, but it might not be later. And the difference was being able to partner with that part of me to be able to create something wonderful rather than allowing that part of me to take over and in protection. Just so many things I really got to be present to in the situation that I was in. What's really interesting to me about that is like every time that I wanted to leave, every time over that 10 years, 12 years, whatever, 15 years that I wanted to just run away and, oh, I'm just going to go do something different. I'm going to go do something new. Every single time it was out of avoidance or out of escape or out of just being done (laughs) and not anything that would have been for me. And every single time I prayed about it, it was God saying, nope, I'm not done with you there yet. I'm not done with you there yet. I had no idea what that meant. And a lot of times I'm like, fine. As I started healing, I started actually seeing why. It was just incredible to be able to recognize the why in what I was doing, saying, acting, choosing. Be able to really look at that and go, okay, so guess what? I can go back to who I am and who I'm creating myself to be. And I can create a new why. And I can look at some of those passions I've always had and I can say, okay, why did I want to do that? Like, why did I want to start my own business? Look at it newly and be able to really look at it and create a partnership, this collaboration within within me. I go, okay, here's my passion. Here's my skills. I'm someone who can, can see the issues, make slight changes or create systems around can actually become benefits. I can see how to make something that's not working work. I do know that that is a part of my marketing gift. In the way that it came up for me, it was nothing that I was really interested in other than the process of creating the process. Have you heard, if not now, when? If not you, then who? Are you being prompted to write a book? To create a podcast, check out Leaving a Legacy at www.coachlaurie, that's coach, L-A-U-R-I-E, dot com. And let's get started on your second act now. In the way that it came up for me, it was nothing that I was really interested in other than the process of creating the process. Those perspectives that we take on from life, from culture, from our parents from our growing up and we hold on to, they filter our real vision and our real view of ourselves. Once I started pulling away all of those pieces of me, maybe we call them masks, maybe we call them shadows, those perspectives were created to protect me that I was choosing that weren't who I was and and releasing them. It's like it opened up this vision to be able to see gifts in me that I really hadn't seen as gifts. And so what I realized, these gifts I had of creating procedures and processes and systems increased effectiveness, 
increased productivity, increased the ability to be able to hire and train people quickly and get people up to speed and up to pace, increased consistent flow of business in the company that I was working for. I can take my really started in about 2019 that fire started fueling inside me to start my own business again. And I started really looking at what I wanted to do, what difference I could make, how I wanted to do it differently than I did it last time. And yet I was still in a space of healing that I wouldn't allow it to take on too much because it scared me. 2020 came along. We were all at home. My adult son and I had been incommunicado for about a year. My heart just said, whatever happens, I want my family together. Let's all take care of each other. So he and his girlfriend moved in. Before COVID hit, I was in the process of looking for a home. And I was working 80 hours a week. I'm thinking, if I'm going to put in this much time into something, I want it to be for me. That's why I was buying a house. If I'm going to put this much time into a job, I want it to be for me and my future and my kids' future. That really stirred it up. That was when I started healing school. All of these insecurities started to get cleared up for me. All of these fears, I was able to look at them newly and see them as a blessing rather than to keep me down. Any fear that came up, I was able to look at it and go, okay, how is this for me? Be able to process through that. All of 2020 and then in our industry, 2020 and 2021 ended up being some of the busiest times in history for the real estate industry outside of the 60 hour work week, there was not a lot of time to think, much less be. I ended up building a beautiful team that was so fluid in taking care of the business. I was finally at a point in my job after 10 years to start really creating forward. So I got really excited about that. For the first time, I'm like actually getting to create and strategize again rather than running on reactive. This is my purpose. <laughs> This is my purpose to make a difference for people. And this are my gifts coming up. And I was finally getting to feel them again. I signed up for a business class and this business class was geared towards starting a new business. And I was so excited about it. And I did that in November of 2021. In December of 2021, I got into an accident, literally rocked my world. I didn't think it was bad enough to really take time and heal and stuff physically. However, I was in so much pain. I put my all into my job. It was April before I really realized I'm hurt more than I thought I was. I'm not getting over this. I was trying everything to get rid of the pain, but I experienced myself in a way that I had never experienced myself before. I've always been a multitasker. I've always been able to handle stress really well. I've always been able to take on more than most. I have this elephant memory that my boss really counted on all the time. I was forgetting things that happened like two weeks ago. So emotional. I'm not a super emotional person. Mood swings. I yelled at my kid and just about died afterward. I actually yelled at two of my employees and I never, ever yell at my employees. I was devastated to the point where I like actually avoided work. I took off work the next day and just had to process that. I was not myself in any way, shape or form, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And that scared me. I took two full weeks off and just sat in prayer and sat in reflection. And I don't sit, by the way. I finally got some clarity and said, oh my gosh, I have literally put my job, my, you know, duties as a mom and taking care of a house that I've put everything in front of myself and not just for the last five months, for the last 50 years. I'm always encouraging other people to take time off. My employees, if they're sick, I never make them feel that. I'm always encouraging my kids, do what's right for you. Take care of yourself first. In those moments, it hit me. I wasn't doing that for myself. I Ended up going and getting an attorney because I wasn't getting taken care of by my insurance company. I wasn't healing. I didn't know what else to do. In our first appointment said, I think you have a brain injury. 
in everything that you're describing. I'm not a doctor. I think you need to go get that taken care of first because I don't think you're going to heal physically until you get that taken care of. And it turned out that I had a traumatic brain injury. That's what's been going on. (laughs) We got down to the end of all of our testing and he said, I truly believe that surgery is going to be the only thing that's going to relieve your pain. So I ended up having surgery in October of 22. The pain was immediately released, but I had some other things that happened. I ended up in the hospital with blood clot. I can't even be at a computer for more than two hours a day. Plus I have five care appointments a week. Every time I thought about going back to work, I would get nauseous. Why? And again, I've learned that these triggers in us are for us. So I sat and just looked at it. Everything in in me said, it's time for you to focus on you. It's time for you to put you first. It's time to put your dreams first, your passions first. And of course, that freaked me out because here I am. I'm in the middle of this now court thing with an attorney with still healing appointments. I need insurance. And so those fears started coming up. Every single fear that came up, there was an answer for it. I knew that I was being provided for. I had actually been reading a series of books. And the first one that I had read or 2022 was Letting Go. And then the next one someone recommended to me was The Surrender Experiment by Michael Singer. And I was so inspired. And just the fact of letting life be and just stepping into it instead of trying to control it or plan it out. And then his first book, which was The Untethered Soul. And in reading that book, listening to my body, being in prayer, it was so clear to me. If I went back to my job, it would be for the wrong reason. Just like all those times, if I'd left it, it would have been for the wrong reason. The moment I made that decision, that choice to give my notice and to step out into my business, it was like everything fell away. All of my fears fell away. All of my pain fell away. All of my worries, my concerns fell away. And I felt the most peace I had ever felt in my life. This is my sign. Now, don't get me wrong. Was I still afraid? There was still fear there. Was I still worried things might not happen? Yes, there was. As easily as those things came up, I was able to fall back into this peace and this surrender and this knowing that I was provided for and just work through it. And I gave two weeks notice. They asked me for three. (laughs) I agreed and started fresh with my business in January of 2023. But my whole plan was to spend January getting all of the things that I had learned through that course last year all put into place. Eh, God had other plans. Literally, the moment people started finding out I was doing this, they're like, oh my gosh, finally. (laughs) Thank God. Okay, when can I hire you? I had eight clients want to start with me and I was blown away and I was overwhelmed and I was just in so much joy and having so much fun and it was wonderful. And I'm like, wait, no, we're going to put a hold on this. That was probably the scariest thing was saying no to business. And yet I had full faith that it would be okay. When you started your healing journey, I hear this a lot is you started to let go of what you thought you knew, what you thought you could Mm do. When I coach people, they want to go to what they know. It's like, but what is it you don't know that might be waiting for you? And you said the confident thing took that next step. You said, I fully knew what was right for me. And you had the faith to keep walking. Can you just tell us about that? When the accident happened right before I was supposed to start this class and, and as I'm going through the class and really struggling to focus, I did. I had lots of feelings of doubt. Again, maybe this isn't the time. Every single time I thought about stopping that class, I got the no, that overwhelming no, don't stop, don't give up. As I started sharing that I was taking this class with some of the people close to me, and then I was thinking about starting my business again in the next three to five years, I started hearing from people around me, oh no, don't wait that long. I want to hire you. And then other people were like, no, Michelle, you know what? You've got this. This is what you were meant to do. Just keep going. I took my goal and cut it down to three years. As I started sharing my story, even of my pain and how I was working through that, started seeing all of these opportunities around me to make a difference for people. Stepping into myself 
actually allowed me to step out of myself and see who I was designed to be, see who I was created to be, to see all the people that I was created to make a difference for. And it started with me, exploded out of that. <laughs> if there's one piece of advice <laughs> that I can give to anybody is be true to yourself, know who you are, know what your gifts are. Don't allow your fears to stop you. Be courageous and work through your fears and look at how your fears might be for you instead of against you. And you will experience life in a completely new way. So how do people get a hold of you if they want to check you out or work with you? My website is freedomcollaboration.com, info at freedomcollaboration.com. Well, Michelle, thank you so much. And I just, this keeps coming up, self-care. When we don't do the self-care, we keep ourselves in bondage. You looked at what it meant to take care of yourself, and that's when you started to experience freedom and healing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Coach Lori here. I am not anti-aging. I am all about aging gracefully. Did you know we stop making collagen at a certain age? And did you know powdered collagen has to go through your whole digestive system? So I am a big fan of Glow Liquid Collagen. It helps me age gracefully inside and out. To order, check the link below. By the way, if you order two at the same time, free shipping. Or if you would like to be an affiliate, make a little extra cash, click the affiliate link. Three things we learned from Michelle. Maybe what you're already doing is your thing, but you want to do it as your own business. Embrace healing and especially embrace self-care. If you love this podcast, here's a big ask. Will you share with your friends and family? Subscribe, give us a review and a five-star rating so that others looking to reinvent their lives will be able to get the help they're looking for. Thank you in advance.